As the winter season approaches, a lot of you will be turning on your furnaces for the first time this year. And that can be a very intimidating situation for some people. Some of you may have just moved into a new home this past summer and the AC worked fine, but now you have to see how the furnace is going to work this year. In this week's video, let's break down the gas furnace and some of the sounds and smells that you get when it comes on for the first time each year. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click the little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. You should understand the nature of the furnace is to provide warm air for your home. And it does that with a gas flame. But that gas flame isn't just like flying around uncontrolled like it does, say, in a fireplace or a campfire. A very structured flame is sent into the furnace. If the flames were to roll out or overheat the furnace, a series of safety switches will engage and tell the control board to turn the furnace off. Whether you want to walk over to the thermostat or turn it on with your smartphone, the sounds and smells that you experience can be confusing. That's not how the air conditioner sounded when it came on this year, and that's definitely not how the air conditioner smelled when it was working either. When the furnace gets turned on, the thermostat on the wall tells the furnace, which is in your attic, your garage, or the closet in the hallway, to initiate a sequence of events that will ultimately shoot a gas flame into the firebox, or heat exchanger. And without getting too techy on you, there are a few parts that come on before that flame starts to heat the home. The thermostat tells the control board inside the furnace to come on, and the control board is the brains of the system that will control the following events as well. The first motor to come on will be the inducer motor. Not a large motor by any means, but it's the one that gets rid of the fumes spent by the flame that warms your home. The control board and a pressure switch acknowledge that the inducer has come on and is working properly. The igniter will come on next. Usually it's a hot surface igniter made of silicon carbide that glows red hot, about 2500 degrees. The timer on the control board then allows the gas valve to open up and pour a controlled amount of gas over the red hot surface igniter. That creates the flame that we were talking about earlier that shoots into the metal firebox, which is also known as a heat exchanger to us technicians. A small flame sensor then verifies that the flame is on and then it sends a signal to the board that everything is burning properly and the system is safe to continue heating the home. If the flame sensor says everything is okay, the control board then tells the blower fan to come on and the sequence is complete. Warm air will then start flowing into the rooms until it gets to the temperature that you want it. That whole sequence of events takes about a minute from the time the thermostat tells the furnace to start to the time that the blower turns on and gives you heat through your registers. When the thermostat senses that the room is warm enough, it tells the control board to end the call for heating which then cuts the flame. Meanwhile, the blower stays on just long enough to cool the furnace down quite a bit, about 60 to 90 seconds, which helps extend the life of the system. So how does the heat exchanger work? Well, it exchanges heat by keeping the flame and its fumes inside the metal box while a fan blows air over the outside of the metal. The heat that comes off the metal and the air from the blower is then carried into your rooms where you feel the warm air. Folks call in every year when they turn on their systems for the first time and say that the system is working, but there's this strange smell coming from their vents, almost like a burning smell. When we get out to their home and verify that all the motors are working properly, we let them know something most people don't know until it's happened to them. That smell you get the first time you turn on your furnace each season is actually just a fine layer of dust that has settled onto the heat exchanger. The dust from your house has made its way past the air filter, past the blower assembly, and onto the metallic heat exchanger. As the metal heats up, the dust singes or burns off and creates that sort of burnt smell. It happens maybe the first couple times you turn on the system, but uh, after that you shouldn't get that smell anymore for the rest of the season. If the smell bothers you, you can just open the doors and windows to your house and let it vent out that way for about 15 minutes. But rest assured that it's not like carbon monoxide because that's an odorless gas that can only be picked up by a carbon monoxide detector. Having said that, if you do turn your furnace on for the first time this season, 
uh, or any time this year and your home's carbon monoxide detector does go off, don't just remove the batteries and don't just treat it like it's some nuisance alarm either. Go ahead and step outside and call the fire department. Let them come out and make sure that everything's okay before going back into the house. It might cause a big show for everyone in the neighborhood, but who cares? It's your family's life on the line. If you don't currently have a carbon monoxide detector on each floor of the house and in the main hallways leading to any bedrooms, now would be a good time to head over to your local hardware store to get one of those. Speaking of detectors in your homes, if you haven't done so already this year, it's also a good time to change out the batteries in those detectors around your home. Your local fire department usually will come out for free and help you replace those batteries if you have trouble reaching those detectors on your own. If they won't and you're in our area, just provide the batteries and we'd be happy to come over and change the batteries for you. Otherwise, any handyman in your area would also be up to the task. As a reminder, the single most important thing you can do to keep your furnace clean is to change those air filters. If the system can't breathe in because of a dirty air filter, then it won't be able to breathe out for you at the supply registers in your room either. Again, if you can't do that because you're elderly or physically unable to reach those filters, give us a call. Another bit of advice that we'd like you to consider is to make sure that there are no flammables around the furnace. Remember, we said that the furnace is either in the attic, the closet, or the garage. And these are common places to store items that tend to be forgotten over time. A metal flue pipe that gets very hot when the furnace is turned on can be dangerous if it's left unattended. Broomsticks, cardboard, newspapers, clothing, and other material can scorch over time if it's resting on the flue pipe. Make sure things like that and flammable liquids like varnish, lacquers, oil, and gasoline are set away from the area of the furnace to keep your home safe this winter. Although you might be nervous to turn your furnace on that first time every year, do it. Turn it on when it's still mild outside too. Maybe don't wait for the first winter snap to hit before finding out that your furnace doesn't work. If you do wait, you might find yourself at the end of a long line of other homeowners and property management companies who are requesting service at the same time you are. So if you don't already have someone coming out to your house each year just to make sure that everything's running safely for you and your family, we'd love to be the company that gets to come out and do that for you. We have a super easy way to have it done automatically. You don't even have to remember to call us either. We call you before the each summer and winter to schedule your appointment. Much like taking the car into your mechanic to get a checkup on it, letting us come out to your home and check all the things that we discussed here today is good for your peace of mind as well as your system's longevity. Checking your furnace safety switches, gas pressures, and proper airflow through the system can add years of life to your system just by maintaining it properly, which is something we specialize in. To recap, the nature of the gas furnace is to use a controlled flame to warm your house, and a series of safety switches is responsible for making sure that it's done in a very controlled way. Any unexpected events that happen with the flame or any other components inside the furnace will tell the control board to shut the unit down. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right, and if you click the little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating, Air, and Solar. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.